Hello everyone, this is Unit 13 here on scene at the Homestead. I want to share my top five electrical modifications to this 2017 4Runner. In need of additional lighting and powering devices, I designed a wiring project to install scene, load lights, a central power port, and master switch that would control all of it. The project took 73.5 hours to complete. This video will consist of my top five mods and a product review of each item. There isn't a hierarchy of the items since all of them are of equal value due to their specific function. A word about most of the companies mentioned in the video. They were informative, helpful, and essential to my wire project success. There are others that aren't mentioned here because they were components such as wire or fittings, etc. I recommend doing business with the ones that have I included links to. I want to see well-operated small businesses selling quality products be successful. So see the non-affiliate links in the video description. Note, I have not received discounts nor free products for any recommendation. All items were purchased at full price unless they were already discounted as a sales promotion. That out of the way, let's get into the top five. Exterior lights. The exterior scene and load lights are essential based on my experience working in emergency fire and medical services. The benefit of the ability to see around the vehicle and where I'm, where I'm backing up to cannot be overstated. There are two lights for each side and the rear mounted on the stock cargo rack with brackets fabricated in the shop. I wish I had good news. My experience with the Lamphus brand lights obtained from the online LEDstore.com are disappointing at best. Six lights were ordered. Three had a seal where the wire exited the light housing. Three didn't. The three on the left in this image don't have them the three on the right do see the see the difference the three that did not have the seal had what appeared to be hot melt glue instead of the plug seal the lights with the seal looked good the lights with the glue look like crap i don't want the hot melt glue looking lights on my truck that's not up to my standards i contacted the company to get replacements and return the lights without the seal they were willing to replace the lights. Only problem with that is they wanted to replace the properly sealed lights with the glue sealed lights. I was told that the lights with the proper seal were a one-off and that the glue sealed lights were standard practice. After informing them I would be returning all of the lights, they found more lights properly sealed to exchange for the glue lights. Um, not sure sure how that worked out but anyway um, other areas of dissatisfaction are the mounting base the base attaches to the light with a bolt that threads onto a nut that slides along a track inside the light housing you can see that here where the red arrow is pointing um, and then when tightening that bolt the nut wants to spin inside that track once you start getting it under tension it wants to, to, to move in there. So, and there's really no way to grab that nut properly and hold it in place to cinch that thing down. Um, I really don't like that kind of design on any light. Each base also has four threaded holes to attach it to the vertical adjustment portion of the base. Several of the holes threads stripped out as soon as they came under pressure from the bolt threads. Several of the holes were never tapped for threads. So the hole was there, but there were, it, was, it was never tapped. Um, let's see, the bolts that were provided with the lights look like they were stainless steel. It should be noted that they had started rusting by the time I had traveled from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to the backwoods of Kentucky. Uh, including brakes, the trip took about 20 hours. I couldn't believe it when I looked up there and, and saw just hours later that the light uh, or the bolts were rusting. 
if I hadn't been on my way back home for a family emergency, I would have sent all those lights back and, and try to find an alternative. I could have bought more expensive, overpriced lights that looked identical. However, the function of these lights don't warrant blazing bright light and high cost. Most of these companies, are ju they're just charging too much for these lights. It's ridiculous. The intent is to light the immediate ar area around the vehicle. I do have some lights from Northern Tool on standby should any of the Lampus lights fail. Let's take a quick look here at how this looks at night. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, looking out the driver's side. This is how I have the light set up now. They could reach out more distance, but I want them more bright closer to the truck. And then I'm sitting in the driver's side, leaning over into the passenger seat because the dash camera and the headrest were in the way. So I just wanted to give that interior view from there. And then this is a view of the backup camera with the vehicle in reverse so that there's the normal reverse lights and then you can see when I turn on those load lights. This is an outside view standing in front of the truck so you can see where those lights are lit up. And then here's a view of the uh, rear load lights and how that's all lit up. Interior lights. All of the overhead dome light bulbs were changed to LEDs from VLEDs.com. That's Victor, Lima, Echo, Delta, Sierra.com. They have changed dull yellow factory light darkness into bright daylight. I'm very happy with them. Uh, the cost was, let me look at my notes, it's, uh, it was $124.20 to change the light bulbs out in the uh, both of the forerunners that we have. That's the front dome, the center dome, and then the two lights in the uh, that rear hatch door. Okay, let's see. Here's the, um, the LED rail lights from pilotlights.net installed overhead in the cargo area are a nice addition. I was hoping for them to be brighter and am mildly disappointed by the output. They do light an area that would be dark, so I'll compromise that for brightness. Plus, they were difficult to install. I hope they last for years. I had to drop that. I had to remove several of the rear panels, uh, the side panels there, in order to be able to drop that ceiling down in the back. So it's a uh, it's not an easy task. It takes quite a bit of effort to get that going. Uh, let's see. These lights were chosen for their length and ability to switch between white and red color modes. The red is good for preserving night vision while working in the cargo area when all of the other dome lights have been turned off. I'm really happy with these changes, both the dome lights and the addition of those rail lights in the back. Uh, it's so much nicer inside that vehicle with those bright lights on, I can actually see something in there now instead of that yellow, almost candlelight strength of, of light bulbs that they came with. And then the addition of that rail light has really been nice in the back. Something I forgot to mention is that's directional. So the, the, um, the light can be turned or rotated so that you can change where it shines down inside the, the vehicle there. Let's take a look at this power tray here. The wire tray by powertray.com is the foundation for all the electric additions. The large cutout was designed to be used with the Busman RTMR. Items were added to the tray on the bench prior to installing in the vehicle. This photo here shows uh, the different layouts I was trying uh, before I finalized the design, in which this image turns out to be the, the final way that I uh, installed all those components. It's well built of good quality materials. Once the desired items were installed onto the tray, the challenge was installing the two bolts that attach to the fender body. You'll need an extension for your socket wrench. 
Someone with small hands would make starting the bolts much easier. This tray keeps everything professional looking, organized, and makes maintenance easy. I would buy one of these again anytime to complete a project like this. They have many different designs. You want to check out their website. Um, if you're using it for a Jeep or other vehicle, go and check it out. They have a lot of different options. Uh, it's also at the Toyota dealership recently, and they thought that was professionally installed by the, the way that look, everything looks there. Let's cover the pre-wired Busman RTMR model number 15305-4. This panel and harness from 12voltconnection.com was chosen to save time on the installation. I think it would have added another day to the project if I had made it myself. In the future, if I make one and I have the time, uh, or I have a new wiring project for something, I will probably try to wire this myself. All the components used to construct it are of top quality. It provides a central location for the fuses and relays, unlike inline fuses and non-mounted relays. You can see how nice it looks here. It was well worth the cost. If you're considering doing a project like this, you know, cost it out compared to your time. Custom switches. The custom switches from Cruiser Head Heads Industries look factory OEM. With minor modifications to the factory switch slot openings, I was able to install them with ease. Note, on the 2017 Forerunner, and I don't know about any other models, there is a small area of plastic that will inhibit the switch from turning off and on properly. If you remove this from the factory opening, the switch will work perfectly. The switches have a harness with a plug that makes it easy to install and perform maintenance when necessary. That way, uh, the wire won't have to be cut to remove interior panels, etc. They do require the use of a relay, so plan well for your projects. There are several models available for the Forerunner, uh, and just before I made this video, they have introduced some rocker switches. So don't feel limited by Forerunners alone. They also cover a lot of different other uh, off-road type vehicles. So go over and check out their website. Um, all these switches can be customized with your choice of logo, image, text, and backlight color. The way these were wired here, um, I, or the switch offers a couple of different options. You can have it to where the, the lighted part of the switch is connected to your interior lights and will come on like when you turn your headlights on. However, I chose to wire mine so that when the switch is activated, the light comes on. Because I, I wanna be able to see that that is on and I don't really need the, um, the switch to be lit up at night. I know where the switches are. I can do it without having to look. Or I can activate the switch without having to look at it. It's more important to me to be able to glance down and see that the light is on on there, indicating that the lights are, are activated than it is to me have them uh, work with the headlights. I am very happy with these lights here. And also Cruiser, he Cruiser Heads Industries uh, because they were really helpful in making sure that I got exactly what I needed, that they fit the vehicle. Um, uh, if, I may, if I do any other projects like this, once again, I'm absolutely going to go to this company for switches. And probably what I'm thinking about doing is getting one more custom switch just as a re an emergency replacement for any one of these switches. I'll put some kind of generic logo on it or design. That way I know that that needs to be changed out. But they're, they're affordable enough to keep a spare on here in case of an emergency. Those were my top five electric modifications additions. Other stuff that was really nice to uh, add to this project as well, these are some like bonus items, is this master battery switch here. Every accessory that is run through that power tray and all the components up there are connected to this switch. 
this is how we used to have stuff on an ambulance and so uh, I've done it here in, in my vehicle that way when I get in or out of there I can turn all of that stuff on at once or turn that off there and know that not a single accessory has a chance of draining my battery down then there's these weather pack plugs here these are waterproof plugs I don't know if you could submerge them but they will certainly take any kind of water that's going to get up under the hood there and based on what I see I believe they could stand short uh, submersion in water uh, every connection that's on that power tray once again is run through those um, weather packs plugs that way uh, if I've got to do any kind of work all those connections can be unplugged in like five seconds and um, move that tray out of the way and you're on, and you're on your way another item helped that that helped uh, when I was doing the wiring were these little small heavy-duty magnets that had uh, a little loop so you could put zip ties through it when I was doing all the wiring off the roof where things are connected to the um, the roof rack uh, these things really held things down where there was no other way to connect them to the vehicle and then to get stuff to the roof what's almost unnoticeable in this image here is this KC highlights wire hider which runs up along the side of your windshield there the wire runs up through the track it's like a conduit for um, a rubber conduit for wire there that uh, is really nice it it's stuck on by 3 hem that very high bond adhesive I put this on and it has withstood some pretty cold temperatures I expect it to do well into the future as is another item that would be good to add to a vehicle and is an essential living down here in South Florida is dash cams what you see it connected to are some ram mounts there so I could get it down low and get a better view from uh, where where it was I had to get it out of the windshield because I kept bumping it every time I used that uh, sun cover thing to keep the sun out the sunscreen last is this able to show me multi-port accessory box that way I can connect up any kind of regular 12 volt plug or up to four USB plugs here simultaneously for all the stuff that I use what you're looking at is the dash camera the cell phone and the computer uh, charger cables there that are connected to it okay that's all I've got if you have questions add a comment or visit my blog site that's all for now this is unit 13 I'm out